In the last video I fitted the cladding to the shed and in this one I'll be building the roof. I picked up some lengths of 75 by 47 millimeter tantalized timber to make a frame for the roof from a local timber merchant. This stuff is not structurally graded timber, by that I mean it's not C16 or C24, so there were some large knots in the wood which are weak points and that meant that I'd need to be careful with my timber selection here as even though the roof isn't going to regularly need to support a great deal of weight, I still want it to be able to support my weight while I'm doing work to it. So I spent some time sorting through the wood and deciding which bits I could use where in the frames to avoid the potential risk of the wood either sagging over time or possibly even breaking at those weaker points. You'll see here that I made the frames for the roof prior to the walls being constructed and that was a conscious decision because I wanted to use the flat and square floor of the shed as a work surface to assemble the frames. After cutting the joists to length, I spaced them apart equally and secure them in place with 80mm screws. I would have liked to have used my framing nailer here as that would have sped the job up quite a lot, but 90mm collated nails are pretty expensive and only available in larger quantities, usually boxes of 3,300, and I suspect I'll probably never get through that many, so instead I used screws as I already had them. Using the off cuts I can then cut some noggins and decide where to place them. They will sit between the joists to provide extra rigidity to the frame. I'm building the roof frame in two identical sections and that's because these frames are going to be pretty heavy once they're assembled and I needed to be able to lift them on top of the wall frames once they were assembled. So now let's skip forward in time a bit to once the wall framing and most of the cladding had been completed a few days later. So I've just noticed something and I'm not sure how well this will come out on camera but this whole wall is bowed uh, in the middle. I'm just going to get up on a chair so that you can see this better. So yeah as you can see it's got quite a big bow in it. I'm not too worried though because I should be able to pull this wall in to that one when I secure the roof in place. I might just need to use a couple of long clamps to pull it in. I'm just gonna have a look at the front wall, see what's going on there. And that one too is slightly bowed, not as much as the back one. I thought it'd be interesting to measure how much the walls have moved by, and they're about 85 millimeters out, which is that much. Not the end of the world, and I know I can pull this in straight, so I'm not too concerned. I asked my brother for some help getting the roof frames in place in the end as they really were surprisingly heavy, partly because the moisture content in this timber was still quite high. Next I could try and get the bow out of the walls. First I secured the roof frame to the long back wall using more screws. And then I could get a couple of long clamps up there and tension them up until the walls were straight again. Then I could get the rest of the roof frame secured in place. And then the second half of the roof can then be buttered up to the first half. I clamped it tightly together and added lots more screws to lock the two frames together and this creates a nice thick and chunky central beam across the width of the shed. Naturally I needed to test it out to see if it could cope with my weight. I decided to get some plywood for the roof. This is 12mm structural ply and I opted for this mainly because I found some cheap via Facebook Marketplace. At this point it was a bit of a race against time as there was lots of rain forecasted for the very next day and to be honest after already working all day on the cladding the last thing I wanted to do was work all evening fitting the sheathing to the roof but I had no choice I just had to get on with it. On the plus side though I could use more of the 50mm collated nails that I'd used for the cladding to add the roof sheathing so at least it wouldn't be too time consuming a process to get these fixed in place. I 
I wanted to get nails through all of the joists and noggins to get everything nice and rigid. So here I'm marking out the position of the noggins underneath so I know where to fire the nails. Surprisingly, I didn't get any blowouts at all here. When I looked up at the roof from down below, all of the nails went into the timber, which was a nice surprise. Then it was onto the sheets at the front, and you'll see here there's still a few gaps to fill right at the very front where the overhang is. To cut the sheets to size, I put my guide rail up onto the roof and made the cuts in situ. It seemed like the quickest and easiest way to do it, and no measuring and marking required. And I could use the offcuts to cover the rest of the roof which got secured in place and cut to size in the same way. We've had three or four days of rain and storms so I covered up the shed as best I could to protect it using some damp proof coarse plastic hung over the doorway. I've got some buckets hung on some of these elastic straps that are holding a couple of tarpaulins up on the roof and I used some old roof tiles and bricks just to hold the tarpaulins down and that's done a reasonably good job of keeping the shed dry. At this point things took a turn for the worse. Little did I know at this point that this was going to be the most frustrating day of the whole project so far. You can probably see in this footage that it was a little bit windy, not the ideal day to put roof felt on you might be thinking. Before I show that though first I'll talk about why I chose to use roof felt rather than some of the other available options. The options I considered in order of expense starting with the most expensive were EPDM rubber roofing which is available in kit form with everything you need to fit it and you get one piece of rubber to cover the entire roof without any joins and it has a lifespan of more than 50 years so a great option for anyone wanting a long term solution but it worked out about three times the price of using a good quality roofing felt. Then there's onduline bitumen roofing sheets which have a lifespan of more than 15 years and worked out around 50% more than the cost of a good quality roofing felt but for my roof as it was constructed I'd also need to add some timber battens in order to create enough fixing surface to be able to screw or nail the sheets down to. I don't think securing them down to 12mm plywood sheathing would give sufficient hold. The cheapest option though was roofing felt and you can get some really cheap stuff that probably won't last much longer than five years and it tends to rip quite easily too or some good quality polyester reinforced stuff that's more expensive but should also last around 15 years and that's what I decided to go for because this is just a storage shed it doesn't need to be anything special and a 15 year lifespan is plenty as far as I'm concerned plus it's easy to fit in theory anyway unless you completely screw it up like I'm about to show you this is the stuff I bought polyester reinforced decent quality and a decent price too the instructions on the pack said to roll it out on the roof prior to fitting so that it relaxes and that supposedly makes it easier to fit. It doesn't say anything about the wind picking it up and throwing it off the roof though, which is what happened shortly after filming this. I didn't get that on camera though I'm afraid. Fortunately it didn't do too much damage to the felt but that's not all. I also managed to completely miscalculate the quantity of felt that I needed, thinking that I could get two lengths out of each 8 meter roll. And I know exactly what I did wrong here. When I designed the shed, I deliberately kept the roof overhang quite small at the sides to give me enough roof felt coverage out of an eight meter roll. But when I built the roof, I decided that it'd be good to have a bigger overhang and obviously just didn't think it through properly. That wasn't all that went wrong though, I'm just getting started. There was no rain forecasted on this particular day, but as you can see in the footage, the roof felt proves otherwise. But I figured I'd carry on regardless. After all, surely it wouldn't carry on raining, would it? Starting at the bottom of the roof here, I'm working on the corner, making a cut with a knife so that I can fold the back edge over and tuck it underneath the overhang at the side. And I can secure it with some 25mm clout nails and I'm leaving about 50mm space in between each nail. So today really couldn't have gone any worse. Uh, the weather forecast over the past three hours said 6 to 8% chance of rain. I've already been rained on six times. <laughs> So the footage in this video is probably going to be pretty limited because every time I get out there with my camera it starts raining and I have to put the camera away and run for shelter. Blue skies at the moment but I'm not going to let that deceive me again. I'm going to pack up for the day and hopefully I can get this done tomorrow.
As you can probably tell, I wasn't in the best of moods. I popped another piece of roof felt on the top to keep the rain off the plywood, weighed it down with some old bricks and roof tiles. On the following day, I fitted the rest of the felt and here's how I did the joins. First, I secured the felt down to the 12 mm ply using some 13 mm clout nails again at 50 mm spacings. I then apply some of this bitumen roof felt adhesive on the joins and over the nails that I'd just added. This is going to help seal the joins and provide a bit of extra adhesion. And then after about 15 minutes when the adhesive has gone tacky, I can unroll the next layer of felt overlapping the previous by about 75 millimeters or three inches. And then I apply downward pressure with my feet just to make sure it's stuck down. I can then nail down along the length of that edge too. I know it seems counterintuitive nailing through a roof and I was worried about that myself but I was assured by a few people on the internet that as the clout nails go in through the felt, the felt seals around the nail and there shouldn't be any issues. So here's my solution for not having enough length on the roll of felt that I got. Basically slap loads of the bitumen adhesive down, leave a generous overlap and then secure it with nails and hope for the best. Far from ideal and I know it looks awful but I didn't want to go and buy another roll and I'm pretty sure it should be watertight. So that's the main thing and it's not going to be noticeable from down below anyway. I know, now I'm just trying to justify my shoddy work and silly mistakes. With the roof felt now fitted, I could trim away the excess and I wasn't able to get very straight cuts when using a knife, so I ended up using an old pair of scissors. A bit of a slow process, but actually it gave me much tidier results and if it works, it works. I left about a 20 mm drip edge on the roof felt to make sure that the rain runs off it and doesn't get into the wooden structure. I'll never be a roofer, that's one thing for sure, and if there are any roofers watching this, all I can do is apologize. I know this must have been painful to watch. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments and later on in this series, I'll be doing a Q&A video. That's it for this one. In the next video, I'll be working on making a door and doing some finishing touches to the shed. There'll be a link to that in the description box below as soon as it's available. And if you can't wait for it, you can also get early access via my Patreon page, link to that in the description box below too. And on Patreon, you can also get exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.